Hello everyone and welcome back to Self Serving Skillet. Today I'm going to do a couple single serving coffees using a few single serving methods. So I recently had a family friend reach out to me after seeing the carbonara and cake episode where I make myself a bialetti of espresso for my espresso cake. And he was kind enough to send me a couple different roasts from his cafe in Portland. Uh, Andrea Spella from Spella Cafe in Portland, Oregon, hailed by the New York Times as the best espresso in Portland. Thank you, Andrea. I really appreciate these gifts and I've been meaning to do a coffee episode for a while. Before we grind our beans, we need to address our grinder. This is a blade grinder from KitchenAid. I'm not really sure which model it is. I've had it for years, but I'll try to find it and post it in the description. And what I like about this grinder is that it has a detachable grinding chamber that you can stick in the dishwasher or just wash by hand. It gives me a better grind than a lot of blade grinders that I've had, but it is still a blade grinder and it doesn't get things exactly <laughs> consistent, but sometimes that's just good enough. And this is a burr grinder. It's a hand crank burr grinder for pretty much a single serving of coffee. I'll post this down in the description as, as well. And we have ceramic burrs in here that will grind our coffee to an even consistency. And that's very important when we're doing something like espresso, but let me demonstrate. So this KitchenAid grinder comes with a measure on the side and the minimum amount that they want us to put in is labeled with a four. That might mean four tablespoons, which is a quarter cup. Yeah, that looks about right. Anytime I've ever gotten a blade grinder, this is what the directions have told me to do, is just to put the cap on and press down. And I don't remember exactly, I think this one wanted me to hold down for 12 seconds for the lowest amount of beans. Right, we have such an uneven grind. We have mountains, right? And we have pebbles. And this will not make a very good cup of coffee. It'll make an okay cold press, which is what I'm gonna turn it into. But we also have a lot of finer grounds stuck to the bottom here. So it wasn't even grinding anymore at the end. Get yourself a chopstick or a wooden spoon or something to scrape that out. You never want to stick anything metal in with a blade. Let's try the Rosalina Espresso. And this time we're going to shake as we grind, which the manufacturer doesn't want you to do. But as you see, this method is far superior. It's called the martini method. We have a much more consistent grind. It's still not perfect. We still have pebbles, but the boulders really aren't there as much. So if you're using a blade grinder, this is definitely the way to go. Let's see, what should I use here? Uh, let's make myself a nice French press. Now with the French press, you want a little bit of a coarser grind. So what I'm gonna do here is unscrew my ground receptacle and then I can actually change the grind setting to a little bit coarser, 
on the bottom of this burr grinder. What I like about this is that I can grind as little coffee as I want to always have it be fresh for me. And I just went about halfway up this chamber. I'm going to attach my grinder and it takes a little bit. It takes a little bit so that we can get a nice even grind. And then when it's not making noise anymore, you know it's done. So let's make these first two into cold press where this uneven grind is gonna matter less. If I was passing hot water through this, my small particles would start to get bitter before I even started to extract much flavor from my large. And all I'm gonna do here is make sure that these are completely saturated and leave them to sit for about a day. And I'm gonna pretty much make these like sun tea. I'll just set them on a window ledge, caps on, and let's, let's label these. This is the uh, Guatemala and that's the Rosalina. And these really only need to go for 12 hours, so you can make them at night to be ready in the morning. I make them in the morning to be ready the next morning. It's not going to hurt them at all. You can do the same thing and put it in the refrigerator for the long, long, long extraction. Uh, but then you're looking at two to three days coffee time. For a French press, you do want your grind to be a little more coarse because you don't want it to go through this mesh filter. And you do actually need to press it down. So you need water to be able to pass through it eventually. If you don't know how many grounds to use, the French press will tell you because the plunger only goes down so far. Another thing I love about that burr grinder is that it lets me grind the exact amount that I need so that coffee is always fresh for tomorrow. In the two blade grinds that I did, I did the minimum amount that the manufacturer wanted me to put in the grinding chamber and ended up with about twice as much as I would use today. So it's just another point for the burr grinder. You want your water about 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 Celsius. And if you don't have a thermometer in the top like I've put here, okay, this is just my own invention, you can bring it to a boil and then stop once it boils and really just wait for it to stop making noise because it does kind of sing at you after it stops boiling. And that's the noise you want to wait for. So I'm gonna make sure that all these grounds are coated, maybe fill about halfway up. I'm gonna let this sit and I'm gonna let it bloom. And once I can see a clear bloom, I'm gonna add the rest. Once I'm satisfied with the extraction, six minutes maybe, I'm gonna put the plunger on top. And there are two schools of thought here. One is to get the extraction where you need it and then stop it right away. And the other is to get the extraction near where you'd like and slowly press it down. The extraction is already where I want it to be, so I'm just gonna go down, not quickly, but not slowly either. And there we go, a French press. 
And of course, French press lovers swear by it because the metal mesh allows the coffee oils to stay in the coffee and you just get a little bit more out of your experience. Oh. And that's, that's just a wonderful cup of coffee. I think, I forget which one I did. I think I did the, the Guatemala and we did the Guatemala Mona Blanca. This coffee, it's just rich and flavorful and full. Andre is a first generation Italian American and he grew up with the tradition of Italian espresso and his mission is to respect and revere and carry on that Italian espresso tradition. And he likes to do a European medium roast, which will still have everything that I love in a dark roast coffee. I'm more of a dark roast guy, but it'll still have a little bit of brightness to it. And that I think is such a happy medium. This is a wonderful cup of coffee. See you tomorrow. All right, so it's a hot day here in St. Paul and this clip didn't load the first time, so let's go again. I already poured off my cold press from this quart size mason jar. You're gonna get a lot of sediment on the bottom because eventually all those coffee grounds saturate and sink to the bottom. Uh, do not pour this down the sink. You can get a little water in there and swish it around and throw it in the trash. Otherwise, this makes great compost, uh, but this will clog your drain. So dig it out, paper towel, whatever you need. Just don't put it down the drain. Now there's a couple schools of thought when it comes to getting your cold press off of the grounds. You can pour it straight off, which is good until about this much and then you start running into some grounds you can use a mesh strainer which will get you a little farther but it's not going to filter out the kind of fine particles or you can use a pour over cone in which case you can just do all of it the disadvantage to doing a pour over cone is that none of the oils that are already present in the coffee are going to make it over to your cold press so i tend to I tend to drink it straight out of the mason jar. And if I really want to bring it out, pour it over ice, I'll use the mesh strainer. All right, let's give that a taste. Mm. And we're still drinking the Guatemala Mona Blanca. This video is getting a little long already, so I'm going to have to make a part two where I do the Bialetti Macapot and the pour over cone. But just because of the slow extraction, I can sort of get out a lot more bittersweet chocolate, plum, black cherry. It's really just, it's very nice. And that comes from the roasting style. As I said before, Andrea likes to do a classic European medium roast that's different from a lot of what's going on in coffee today, which I've just learned is called third wave. And it's a very light, acidic, sort of in your face, terroir driven style. And I personally don't like it. Another name for it is a cupping roast. But this European medium style of roasting not only makes this coffee absolutely delicious, but it sort of ups the health aspects of it as well. The acids are less problematic. It has a little less caffeine. It has a little more sugar from the roasting style, which explains why I can tease out all of those sweeter kind of flavors, the bittersweet chocolate, the plum, the black cherry, Mm. And along with this roasting style, the starches and lipids are developed to contrast the bitter colloids and caffeine that occur naturally. 
So if you want to support Andrea's work, go to spellacafe.com. He has a bunch of different ordering options. All of the beans are carefully selected with care and respect for their origins and the farmers. And they do have direct trade with all of the coffees that they procure. So spellacafe.com, they roast in small 10 to 12 pound batches, which means that it's always gonna be fresh. And I believe that everything that ships out of there ships within 24 hours of being roasted. He does want me to remind you though that the best practice comes from supporting your local roaster. So a quick yellow book pages or Google search should give you a couple of options. And from there, it's just a little bit of trial and error to see what you personally connect with the most. But a couple I like here in St. Paul are Roots Roasting and JNS Bean Factory. They both do a really good job. I'll see you guys in part two.